men and women sitting in front of you uh, are a fairly good representation of what we call the cultural economy in the state of Louisiana. I'm John Besh, pork cook and bottle washer. have um, a couple of restaurants. I've been playing Zodico music since 1981. <coughs> I'm one of many painters and, uh, and musicians that find this a uh, very open and hospitable environment. And one of our intentions is to lead the international discussion about what culture means, uh, not only to the edification of people's lives, but to the economic value that we produce. In a place like Louisiana, we do treasure the arts. New Orleans, for me, is one of those quintessential places, like uh, Rio or Havana or um, Paris. The creativity that is here really kind of flourishes from this wellspring. Part of that authenticity comes from something that's very deeply rooted. Unlike in many places, it's not so unusual to be a fifth-generation craftsperson in Louisiana or a third-generation musician. It's not something cage for the tourists, it's the real deal. This doesn't happen everywhere. <coughs> it does grow here organically, and it's about us taking that and getting the business skills to make entrepreneurs out of all of them. When you hear about Creoles, uh, you have to note that the Latin root for the word Creole and for create are really basically the same. And one of the great things about Louisiana is that the people who have been created here were their connections to West Africa, to France, to Spain, to the Mediterranean, the Caribbean, uh, are carrying forward tradition, but also changing it constantly. Post-Katrina, I believe that culture, music, food, the architecture are the real agents of our recovery. You could add value to raw material, raw talent, and intellectual capital and grow it from the ground up in an indigenous way that's completely unique that nobody else in the world can have. We are creating hubs of cultural activity with two levels of tax incentives. What we're already beginning to hear is anecdotal evidence of how much commerce and how much cultural activity is being inspired and, uh, and compelled through that kind of development. Fine arts culture in general is one of the fastest growing areas of the travel industry. And if you could get the attention of the international art world by having a world-class biennial here, you could have a serious economic, positive economic impact on the city. So what we've managed to do is get artists to create these installations all throughout the city, and we turned New Orleans <coughs> into kind of a big outdoor art gallery. And we brought in about between 40 and 50,000 visitors uh, at a time when the economy wasn't supporting a whole lot of, uh, let's say, optional travel. Uh, but if you don't create the space, you know, so that it can actually grow, that, that's the greatest challenge. And I think Mitch is on to this thing. Create space that gives you intimacy with all the different people that are there, and then help recognize what genuinely does continue. One of the key things we did was to build a museum and to help build a museum district. We're across the street from the Contemporary Arts Center. <clears throat> We're across the street from World War II Museum. All of us uh, work together. Each one of these individuals absolutely needs the other, that they feed each other, literally. Uh, because this is an industry that relies on the talent of all of them to create a whole. And we think of our creative industries and our creative culture as our greatest natural resource. It's our job to, to make that a business. It's a clean industry. It's an industry that brings people together. It's an industry that reaches across cultures. It's an industry that reaches across race. And it's an industry that reaches across geography. And as John said, we think we're the ones that have it right.